Hello Brain Shakers, welcome to today's episode where we're going to be doing a quick simulation on the fetal skull. I must be quick to make mention that I have done a very detailed um, explanation or video on the fetal skull and it is readily available on my YouTube channel which is the Brain Shakers Academy. But for today's sake we are going to be utilizing a little man who is lying right in front of me here. Then we are going to be looking at those parts that form the fetal skull and then their relevance as well in terms of the outcome or the uh, uh, the, in helping facilitating the process of labor as well. So it is made mention also that there is a passage and a passenger. Now a passage is obviously the female pelvis that we have obviously looked at in detail as well, readily available on the Brain Shakers Academy YouTube page as well. And also the passenger. Now the passenger is the fetus. So the fetus or the passenger should be able to go through the passage in order for that labor or in order for that process of delivery to culminate into something that is very successful. So it means that they should be able to navigate those uh, diameters in the female pelvis to then be able to be delivered. So the biggest and most difficult part to actually deliver is usually the head. Why? Because it is considered to be the larger part unless where you have an abnormality where obviously the tummy is slightly bigger than the head but in a normal sense the head is usually the most difficult one to deliver and takes a little bit of time and so caution as well must be uh, put into consideration when you are delivering the head. Now, let's quickly look at uh, some of those uh, parts that form up uh, the fetal skull. So, on the posterior aspect here, you have the occipital bone. So, this is the occipital bone, meaning that the line that you see here is what is cutting the occipital bone from these other bones. So the occipital bone, then you have a line that demarcates it from the other bones and we refer to this line as a suture. So this suture is referred to as the lambdoido suture. So this is the lambdoido suture. And then on the upper aspect, you have these bones here. Now, these two bones here are what we're referring to as the parietal bones. Now, the parietal bones stay in close proximity to the occipital bone by that lambdoidal suture. Now, the coming together of these two parietal bones and the occipital upon then forms a space in between here. Now, this space that is formed here is what we refer to as a fontanel. And this is the posterior fontanel because you're looking at it from the posterior aspect or it is situated in the posterior aspect. And it can also be referred to as the lambda from which the suture then gets its name lambdoido suture. Now, the two parietal bones, which is the left and the right, will then be connected one to another by another suture. Now, this suture, which is obviously emanating from the posterior aspect or from the lambda coming all the way to another fontanel here, is what we are going to call the sagittal suture. So the sagittal suture joins the two parietal bones here. Then as it comes, it then falls into another fontanel. So if I rotate this like this, so this is your sagittal suture that would then come and fall into this fontanel. This fontanel is kite shaped and this other fontanel is triangular in shape. Now, this diamond shaped or kite shaped arrangement is what we are calling the anterior fontanel or what we are going to call the bregma. So from there, fontanel here, 
you have a continuation here of that suture line. Now that suture, when it continues after the brigma, it changes its name because it will now hold the two bones that we are calling the frontal bones. So these are the frontal bones. So during embryology, the two are basically separate bones, but then they have to fuse. But before they fuse, that suture line that is there is what we are referring referring to as a frontal suture. So this is a frontal suture. And then you have a suture now that is going all the way to the sides from the bregma. So this line here or the suture line that is separating the two frontal bones from the parietal bones is what we are going to refer to as a coronal suture. So it separates the two frontal bones from these major parietal bones. So it is very important that even as you are doing your delivery or as you're doing that assessment, you are able to identify these important structures. So you will need to determine what position the baby is in by getting to locate the fontanelles and the suture lines as well. So in a normal cephalic presentation, you will have your occiput here as the denominator, meaning that wherever the occiput is will determine what the position is. If the occiput is in the posterior aspect, then it means that you obviously have a posterior position. If it is in the lateral aspect, then you will have a lateral position. If it is in the anterior aspect, then you will have an anterior position. It does change, however, when you have a first presentation because now it is the mentum that then becomes your denominator in terms of positions. And if you have a brow presentation, then you obviously have the sinciput there coming in as your denominator. So basically, those are the parts of the fetal scar. And I look at the different diameters or where to move from to the next one in a separate video. So that is that on the fetal scar. Thank you so much for watching and I will see See you in the next one.